Hello humans, it's Brad again. And this week, yesterday in fact, I received via email one of my many FAQs, frequently asked questions. And I had thought I'd done a video about this, but when checking back through my old videos, I realized I've never done a video specifically about this topic, although I think I have referenced it before. The question was, can I be your online Zen student? which is a little different from can I be your Zen student. So I'd like to kind of address this idea of online Zen as I see it. In recent years, uh, there has been a kind of a push around the American and possibly even European Zen world or Buddhist world to try to make online Zen happen. San Francisco Zen Center a few years ago was working on instituting what they called, I think they called it their fourth practice space. And I believe they counted it as being the city center in San Francisco itself, Tassajara, their monastic center, and Green Gulch, their farming center. And they were going to open what they called their fourth practice space, which was going to be an online practice space. I haven't actually visited this online practice space. I don't, I don't even know if it exists yet. Maybe somebody can comment and tell me. But when I talked to the person who was working on it a few years ago, she told me that they want to make this like a full on, like just like a Zen space of any other. So it wouldn't just be videos of lectures. It would be interactive so that you could have kind of a Zazen Kai, like a meeting to do Zazen and maybe group discussions and so on and so forth, all done from the comfort of your own home on your computerizer, which is I'm pointing at my own computerizer right now. And I'm pointing at you guys who are looking at your computerizer. So that's how they were going to do it. And I think there's a few other people doing similar sorts of things. I, I participated in one group in Finland that they do a, a, an online Zen meeting, or at least they did a few years ago when I participated in it. And so I am not dead set against this thing. But there are some problems in it for me personally. So let me just give you my personal take. The few times that I've participated in things like this, it's been weird. Uh, for example, when I did that thing with the group in Finland, I, I knew these people. I go to Finland every year and run retreats. I'm going in late May, actually, to run another retreat in Finland like I do every year. So these were people who had come to other retreats of mine, and I consider them friends. But what was going on when we sat together online was that I had this same laptop that I just picked up and I don't know what that looked like to you. It probably looked like an earthquake. But I had my laptop out pointed to me doing Zazen, as we all did. And we were supposed to have, you know, I think he had multiple screens on the, there so you could see everybody. And we, you know, a bell rang and we did, did Zazen, and it was weird. I couldn't do Zazen in the normal place in my apartment that I usually do because I, I couldn't get it to fit and get the camera looking at me. So I had to do it in a weird spot. Uh, I was facing my stove, actually. And, and just the feeling of having this computer present during Zazen was disconcerting to me. It was like there was something else kind of monitoring me for Zazen. I, I can't really explain it, but it, it changed the feeling of the thing. So it was no longer, it was nothing like the feeling of actually sitting with the, the I think, three or four people who had actually sat with several times before. Uh, it was completely different from that. The other experiment I did was a few years ago when we did the Angel City Zen Center fundraiser. I let the guy who was doing the fundraiser, organizing it, talk me into an idea I initially didn't want to do. But he talked me in the idea of doing online dokusan as a kind of a perk for the fundraiser. So if you donated a certain amount of money, you got an online dokusan with Brad Warner himself, which just made me feel really super uncomfortable, just the idea of it. And when the time came, I did the online dokusans. They didn't feel like dokusan. Dokusan is a personal meeting between teacher and student, and I was just up at Mount Baldy last weekend, and I did a lot of those with different people who came to the retreat. And 19 people wanted dokusan out of the 29 who came to the retreat. 
So the majority of the retreat for me was spent in, in a little room uh, talking to these people one-on-one. -on -one. And there's a certain feeling I get, and I've done it a lot. I do it at pretty much every retreat that I run. I do these dokusans. And there's a, there's a feeling of sitting in the same room talking to the person, just, just me and the person who I'm talking to, and nothing else. It's an enclosed space. It's not for public consumption. It's just between me and that person. And when I did this or tried to do it via Skype, it felt completely different. And I'm not sure exactly why, but I'll give you some theories I've had after thinking about why it's different. Uh, number one, I'm not in proximity to you when I am doing it via Skype. So there's all sorts of things that we're missing. Like when I was in that room at Mount Baldy, it had a certain smell because it had a mold problem the year before they told me. So it had this kind of weird musty smell. We were experiencing the same temperature. We were experiencing the same uh, low level of oxygen because the place is like at 8,000 feet above sea level. It, so there was a lot we were sharing other than just our talking together that made the communication happen. And, and maybe, I don't want to get too woo-woo on you, but maybe there's a little bit of electrical impulse is passing between us or, or I don't know farts or you know various things happen uh, nobody farted during Dokusan but it could have and and we'd have shared that too but that was impossible so to me Dokusan is not a, just a moment of sharing words and ideas and concepts it's a moment of sharing a space together and doing a thing together because we're doing a retreat together even though I'm mostly sitting in rooms talking to people and they're mostly sitting in rooms doing zazen but we're still sharing the retreat so that's important the other thing is the the presence of these recording devices acts as a little bit of a monitor and and a little bit of a, a um, another presence i don't know for example, if the person who I am talking to in an online dokusan might be recording the talk that we are giving for, you know, future playback or whatever, or to share with his friends or who knows what you would do with a recording like that. Uh, I don't, I don't sit and think about that, but it's sort of a, it's sort of there. Like, for example, years ago, a long time ago, I had this idea, this is before Hardcore Zen was written, I had the idea that that I would go in and have conversations with Nishijima Roshi because we'd had a lot of real interesting conversations with just him and me sitting there talking. And I thought, oh, th this will be great. I'll bring a tape recorder in, a, an actual cassette tape recorder, and I'll record these conversations and it'll be brilliant. The weird thing that happened is as soon as I pressed record on that machine, the entire tone of the conversation changed. And the magic that had been there when it was just a one-on-one -on -one conversation was gone. Uh, they weren't terrible conversations, and I think I still have the cassettes in a drawer somewhere, and maybe I'll do something with them one of these days. But they weren't like the conversations that we had had when it was just him and me, strictly him and me. Uh, there's something about that. There's some kind of intimacy that that happens. It's, you know, I hate to get gross you out, but it's like, you know, having sex. It's just you and the person you're having sex with in that space and it, everything that's shared between you is is for you and that person and nobody else gets involved in it and it changes the intimacy of the thing and i think the intimacy of online dokusan well it's impossible so uh, there, there's also a, another sense that i've talked about which is you don't know if i'm wearing pants right now uh, I happen to be wearing pants, but there's no way for you to know it. And you don't know what's beyond this this bit that you're seeing right here. You don't know what the rest of the apartment looks like or what it feels like. And that means it lends itself to a kind of mm, theatricality. It, that becomes possible. So it's possible I could decorate my backdrop in such a way as to make you think you're seeing something that you aren't really seeing. And, and that to me also detracts from 
the experience. Now, I'm not saying I'll never do any sort of online Zen thing. Every so often it comes up in conversation with the Angel City Zen Center people and others. And I always say, well, I'll think about it, <laughs> which is, you know, I should say yes or no. But I, you know, I, I always kind of want to leave it open, you know. This is the reason I'm not in that business. And it's not it's not for lack of an incentive, because people have told me, there was one guy uh, who asked me this question about online Zen teaching, and he offered me, I think, $75 a session that, uh, you know, so I would spend like half an hour with him on, on Skype, and he'd give me 75 bucks. You know, I, I, given the reach that I have, I could probably get, you know, I don't know how many people would be willing to pop that kind of money out for, for, uh, for a chance to Skype with me, which just seems weird, but, you know, there are people out there who would do it, and it would make me some, some decent cash, I'm sure. But that isn't enough of an incentive to do something that I don't feel right about. And, and so until I can find a way that I feel right about or until I get totally desperate for money, uh, I, I'm just going to uh, hold off on doing the online Zen thing. And this is not meant to be a condemnation of everybody who does online Zen. It's just the reasons I don't think it works for me, the guy in the froggy shirt. Thanks a lot. If you want to donate to my continued ability to not do online Zen, but do these videos, you can contribute via Patreon and PayPal. The links are below. That's how I make my living. And I really appreciate it. Really appreciate all the people who are signed up already and regularly contributing. I'm sorry I don't thank you enough personally. Uh, I'll try to get better at that in the future. And we'll see you again next time. Bye.